John chapter 2, verse 1 to 5. John chapter 2. Hallelujah. Once again, Pastor Ken and Pastor Alfred, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Mr. Grace. Mr. Grace, thank you. Thank you, Gwen. You did it for your father, make it reward. In Jesus' name. Amen. John chapter 2, we are reading from verse 1 to 5. On the third day, there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Now both Jesus and his disciples were invited to the wedding. And when they ran out of wine, 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 of wine, please, if you have a highlight or you have a pen, could you highlight, could you highlight or underline it? If you're using a device, you can also highlight it. And they ran out of wine. People will always run out of ideas. People will always run out of resources. People will always run out of helpers. But not you. Shout amen. 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 The mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. They have no wine. Jesus said to her, Woman, what does your concern have to do with me? My hour has not come. His mother said to the servant, Whatever he says to you, do it. Whatever he says to you, do it. This short message today is titled Living in the Miracles. It's a very short message because it is, it is for second service. It is not the message that I was supposed to preach in the first service. I will reserve that one until Sunday. God will. Praise the Lord. His mother said to the servants, Why didn't the mother say to him? Because the mother understood that Jesus is the Lord. Amen. Jesus said, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes out from the mouth of God. By every word that comes out from the mouth of God. By every word. So, what feeds us actually is not food. What, pro what provides or actually produces the food is the word of God. Amen? Amen. Now, look for the word of God in a hurry and do it in a hurry. Look for the word of God in a hurry and do it in a hurry. The Bible says in Isaiah chapter 1, verse 19, if you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. If you are willing and obedient, you will eat. So poverty is the absence of willingness to obey the word of God. Lack is a product of disobedience to the word of God. Or willingness to do it. Hallelujah. The Bible says, Cost be the man that does not serve God with joy. So you might do it and do it grumpily, I mean grudgingly. But if you are willing, excited about it, and then you are also obedient, you shall eat not any kind of food, but something that is good. Amen? Amen. There, there, are, there, are, there, are, there are certain classes of blessings. There are certain, certain levels of miracles. And I'm not saying that God is discriminating. But as a man is, as a man thinking, so he is. So the level of mercy and grace and favor and miracles won and joy is directly proportional to his willingness to obey the word of God. And remember, people of God, you cannot obey what you don't know. Remember also that you cannot obey the word you have not heard. Shout amen. Yeah. Now, be in the hurry. When you are searching the scripture, search the scripture with the only intent to discover, to do it. As a pastor, I might be tempted to discover, to preach. 
But it is better to search the scripture for yourself. So you discover it to do it. Amen. Somebody said, discover to do. Discover to The word of God is for us. And it is the only thing that establishes us. That's why the psalmist says, I have hidden your word in my heart that I may not see against you. Amen? I have hidden it well in my heart that I may not see against you. So, it, it is also a protector. It shields us from sin. Remember, the sin is what cuts man off from glory. <laughs> because any man living with that glory is living with what? Eh? For the wind, sin has wage. And sin is what cuts people off from glory. For all have sinned. And for all short of the glory of God. But once you now become born again, remain born again. If you remain born again, you remain in the glory of God. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. So, as I hear you. Yes. Now, yes. what benefits do we enjoy by doing the word of God? If, if there's something you have to take home today, if there's something that you have to take home, eh, take home the fact that you live by the word of God. That, Take it home that you live exclusively, but men shall not live by bread alone. Bread, bread, bread. He said he, it is God himself that gave sin to the soul and bread to the eater. So it is the word of God that gives you both the sin and the, and the bread. So bread actually is secondary, it is tertiary. What produces the bread is the word. Like what makes people rich? It's not what comes into their pocket. It's their mind. Somebody say, I get it. I get it. Somebody say, I get it. I get it. So take it home. That whenever you're in, you don't even need anybody to say, go and read and finish like the, 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 the teenagers will talk about that later. To start a place. No. You, you are in a hurry to read the Bible so you can discover God for yourself and by yourself. And so you can, and so you can do the word of God. Amen? Amen? So what do we start to benefit? By doing the word of God. Remember, faith comes by hearing and hearing by. So to do it, you must, you must hear it. I don't want to emphasize on you studying your Bible. I don't want to move that around. I am emphasizing on doing it. So what are the benefits? Benefit number one, we step out Somebody say, step out. step out. We step out of obstacles and we step into miracles. We step out of obstacles and we step into miracles. There's nobody that will be enjoying obstacles. In fact, there's no enjoyment in obstacles. Yeah? There's no enjoyment in obstacles. So there's nothing called enjoyment in us living a life of struggle, living a life of management. Suffering is not. Look at the spelling of suffering. You know, of suffering. You know that it, it is not a good spelling. Suffering is not good when you suffer because you don't know the word of God. The suffering becomes good. When you suffer for righteousness, then you know that there is something that heaven is about to celebrate you. Something is about, so God is cooking something up for you. Amen? Amen. Step out of obstacles. Step out of hard life. Step out of hardship. It was last, I guess it was... Uh, on Wednesday night, that our father in the faith was teaching what he entitled uh, anti-government uh, 
part of. There are things that draw people back. And the summary of that teaching is that people, people run, run into those obstacles because they do not know the scriptures and the power of God. Like Jesus told this and all the Pharisees, you err because you do not know the scriptures, nor the power of God. Why do we say step out of miracles, uh, step out of obstacles? Number one is that when you enter into the world, you begin to step the world of God himself, which is not carrying you, will help you step out of depression. In when people mention depression, you begin to wonder how does it taste? Because you don't you don't you have never experienced it. And God will never will not allow you to experience it. Say amen to that. Amen. Number one obstacle is depression. Number two is distress. The Bible used to say, Whoa. Another meaning for woe is distress. Another word for distress is woe. Amen? Amen. When you get the word, you will not suffer the woe. Huh? When you get the word of God inside of you, you will not suffer the woe. So the word of God protects you from every woe of life. The word of God inhibits war and enhances your welfare in life. Number three obstacle is disappointment. Number four obstacle is being exhausted. Many people are weary and exhausted. Number five is people are stressed out. Little thing trips them off. Little challenge they are snapped. Why it is an evidence of absence of the word of God in action in the man's life. That's why Jesus says, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavenly laden, and I will give you rest. Come unto who? Come unto the word of life. For in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God, and he was with God. And the Bible says in John chapter 1, verse 14, that he is, that he is, or he was the, the, the word that became flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory. So the word of God comes with glory. And the glory of God is made manifest in the word of God. And in the life of everyone that lives it. Amen? In the life of people that know it and live it. Some of us have, Lord, help me to know your word. And Lord, help me to do your work. Number two example of what's up is weakness. Eh? Weakness. The word of God keeps you alive. It keeps you healthy. It keeps you excited. It, ma it, makes, it, makes, it, makes, it makes you laugh when people expect you to cry. It, 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 it charges you. It reinvigorates you. It re-engineers you. Hallelujah. I think it was like five years that my wife woke me up. And up till that time, I'm still alive and healthy and I'm still active till now. And I came back last night. So and it is only the word of God that can make it happen. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. my, our Father in the Lord is not, is, is not only my Father. Our Father in the Lord said the other day that he walked from 11 to 5 a.m. Doing what? Studying the word of God and praying. So what, what God releases inside of you as you open the word of God to meditate, to study and meditate on it, is his own life. The Bible says that God does not sleep and, and he does not slumber. That he that keepeth Israel neither sleepeth nor slumber. How? Because he's the word. So when you open your heart to the word of God, he releases to you all that God is. Amen? Amen. Everything that God is. Someone said, I'm ready. Ready. I can hear you. Somebody said, I'm ready. I'm ready. Somebody said, I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. So he takes away sickness. For he giveth, he, he giveth them in his word, and his word healed them. Eh? He giveth them. I went to Pastor Goodhart's church. Um, one woman of God was sharing a testimony. She was in the Bible school, and all of a sudden, the devil attacked her. 
and she had stroke all over. She had in South, she went to South Africa to study. She had stroke. She could not. She was foaming all over. People were carrying her, and she said, while she was on the sick bed, she couldn't talk. The spirit of God reminded her a scripture, Romans chapter eight, verse eleven. And if the spirit of him that raised Jesus from the dead dwelleth in you, he that raised Jesus Christ from the dead will quicken your mortal body because of his spirit that lives in you. She began to write at this word. She began to speak it. When she began to, you know, regain consciousness, it began to come out of her mouth. She, she stayed on it on the the hand that was on her right came back to life. The leg that was on her right came back to life. The other side of the face that was on her right came back to life. The word will make you strong. And the word is able to heal you. Somebody shall live in the miracles. Live in the miracles. By the word of God. By the word of God. Example number three of obstacle is weak faith. Some people have faith that's strong. And you can understand why. Because they take the word of God in. It's an inoculation. It's a holy God booster. It's a power booster. It's a faith booster. The word of God coming inside of you. It's like you plugging your iron in the electric. And it is hot. So, and, and that's why the Bible says that we hear the word of God. And when we continue to hear it, faith comes by that means. Yeah? Faith comes by hearing. Hearing what? Hearing the word of God. How many times? Keep hearing. That's how you build your faith. Hallelujah. So when faith is weak, it means the word of God is lacking. When faith is weak, it means that the person is not studying the word. Because it is the food of the spirit. Hallelujah. Amen. How many of us can last 72 hours without food? I guess yes. How many of us can last one year without food? Nobody. Nobody. Even even one month, nobody. Amen. Uh, no, you give to sisters. <laughs> so you see what? You see what? Yeah, <laughs> so you can uh, the same way your spirit and we are spirit. We are more spirit than we are physical. Amen. We are most. We are living in the more spiritual world than we than you think we're living in the physical. We living in the physical world. No, we are spirit. Living in the body, that's why we have a soul. So, when you feed only the body, when you feed only the container, and the content itself is lacking, then there's a trouble. So, feed your spirit. When you feed your spirit, you develop your faith. Amen? Amen. Number three thing is anxiety. That's an obstacle. That's an obstacle. That's an obstacle. And anxiety and doubt and fear, they are sisters, they are triplets. That's why the Bible says in Matthew chapter 11, verse 24, Therefore I say unto you, what things soever you really desire, when ye pray, believe that you receive them, and ye shall have them. But if you don't know this scripture, for example, if you don't know it, for example, and I had a testimony that it was this scripture that the Lord used to raise um, to raise uh, Kenneth Henry from the sick bed. He meditated on it, and one day the pastor came. He asked the pastor, "Does does this scripture actually mean what he says?" He said, "Yes." He 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 dwelt on that on that scripture until something ruptured in his heart called faith, and he came out of his. State. Today, anything that is not alive in your in your in your family or even in your own particular life is coming back to life. Amen. Can I hear a bigger amen? amen. Now, if, if, if there's anything that is not working, the word of God will work it. Uh, allow the word of God to work things in your life that are not working, and it will work. Why? Because the word of God works. It always, 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 always works. It does work. So when I declare that anything that is not working is not just an empty promise, it means you have a responsibility. It means there's something you can do. It means that there's something that you can start to do now 
And what is that is loving the world and uh, applying yourself on the world and then meditating on the world and then begin to do it. Hallelujah. Amen. One more thing, device I summarize. Be in a hurry to get the world and be in a hurry to do it. Huh? Be in a hurry. Don't, don't read the word of God so that you can just memorize it and that is it. So you can put it when the time goes. No, that one is also good. It's powerful. I love that. But be in a hurry to do it. So that we will not just hear the word of God and not do us. The Bible calls us when we do that foolish thing. And you are not foolish. Because your father in heaven is not foolish. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's rise up. Amen.